Well, it's an anniversary. It's 170 years now of the discovery of the skull at Forbes Quarry with its long history. Uh, we know, know her now as Nana. We have her in there with her with a face. Uh, it's 170 years. Um, a lot of things have been happening in the last five years in the world of Neanderthals, particularly genetics. Uh, therefore, it's time to take stock. And how important was the discovery of that skull, considering that it put Gibraltar on the map? I think the discovery, although maybe it wasn't realised as clearly at the beginning, um, had huge significance to the point that it was. we now know from Darwin's letters that he had that skull in his hand and examined it. So when Darwin was putting together uh, his theory, he held that skull in his hand and therefore he was asking questions about it. It put Gibraltar on the paleoanthropological map, if you like. Um, people in the 19th century knew Gibraltar because of these finds and even in the early 20th century. And then we seem to have got into uh, doldrums or the whole thing got a little bit forgotten until the whole thing revived again right at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. Um, so the skull was very significant uh, in terms of, and still is, in terms of understanding uh, the nature of who we are. Uh, and for example, we know now that we who are of non-African ancestry carry Neanderthal genes, so to some degree they didn't really go extinct. We're all a bit Neanderthal ourselves. So it's all had a huge influence in, in our understanding of, of our own uh, evolution, if you like. And how is the Kalpa Conference viewed internationally when you consider the uh, guests that come here every year? What are people's opinions of it when they go back and tell others about it? Oh, it's viewed uh, as, a, as a high prestige conference to come to and to be invited to come to. Um, some of the speakers have been before, others are new. Um, but I think in this world of paleoanthropology and the study of human evolution, the Kalpa conference has become the landmark conference in the world. And you talk about uh, the different discoveries and the discussions that have been held uh, regarding Neanderthals over the last five years, uh, but what does the legacy, what kind of legacy does the discovery of the skull leave behind? I think uh, uh, it's a lot of what is happening now is the result of modern technology. That modern technology includes the ability to get DNA, ancient DNA, from fossils, something which we couldn't have imagined. It was the first results were published in 2010, that's only eight years ago, and it's really uh, rocketing. You may have heard last month the uh, discovery that was reported of a hybrid, a uh, hybrid between a Neanderthal and a Denisovan, which is a, another species that existed uh, somewhere in Siberia. And it was a first-generation hybrid. In other words, some of these populations were hybridizing. And we know that now from, from this ancient DNA. It so happens that the, the father of the study of ancient DNA, even though it's recent, Svante Pabo from the Max Planck Institute in, in Leipzig in Germany, is coming. Uh, and that's fantastic news for us to get somebody like that because we're going to learn firsthand a lot about what uh, has been done and what we're learning, not just about the Neanderthals and ourselves and these Denisovans, but ghost species. People are now finding DNA in little fragments of bone uh, which correspond to humans that we don't know what they look like. And that's the exciting stage we're at now. It's not just about Neanderthals. We're realizing there were all these other lineages around. And that's only as a result of technology. So I think all these old fossils contributed to the discussion but still have the opportunity to contribute um, by perhaps even producing DNA.